Hello everybody, welcome to episode 23 of All the Mods 9 to the Sky, where uh, we decide to finally upgrade our power situation. So let's jump in and see how it's done. Alright guys, let's hop right into this episode here. Uh, I noticed something between the end of last episode and this episode that... Uh, I do have enough... Well, it's it's about to be out. The chlorine gas. Uh, it did build up enough to build up some hydrochlorine. But for some odd reason, this uh, is not getting the gas like it should be. So I'm going to replace this uh, pipe piping system here. And... Uh, let's let's go with a laser I/O system here. We'll say on the down, we'll put in a fluid card. We're gonna say it gets to extract. Uh, we're going to build some hard overclockers for this. Uh, let's see here. Or is the magical mystical top tier number? And we can just right click that fifth, uh, fifth right click that one, or shift control right click that one, and control left click this one up at the top. All right, so now that that is set up, that it extracts on that, we set this one to be receiving water from this. So that's getting water at a full speed. And we can set one of these guys here. We can uh, say on the north end, we'll put in a fluid card here. And Take our laser wrench, hook these two up, and we can see water is going in here now. Uh, so it's keeping water fully in there now. So uh, I would like to also be able to heat it because the, the, the stuff just does not produce fast enough. Uh, also, I want to get <clears throat> into the power situation. Might do that next episode. So, uh, here we go. Why did I come up here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to look at mechanism heaters. Um... Okay, mechanism has resistive heaters, steel wood heaters, and a superheater element. I think we can just hook these up to it. A modular, somewhat dangerous radiator that is capable of emitting massive amounts of heat to its surrounding. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to go. I'm going to uh, look up the heat generator here, the resistive heater here, and the superheating element, uh, and see which one applies the best heat to the system. Okay, guys, uh, we're back, and we're gonna make a resistive heater here. Uh, that because that's that's what we need. And we also will need another uh, valve. Uh, for the, the conductive or the evaporation thing. Evaporation valve, I think that's it. Uh, 
go down here. Uh, we'll set it up. I'm looking here. Power that we're getting is from there. So, so what we'll do is pop in a valve here. Uh, place the resistive heater. I think you want to place that a different way, like that. And those are so annoying. We need to have these basic thermal conductors here. And that will just take the uh, heat that this will make here shortly and convert it into power. So we're going to need some universal cables. Just a few. Just a few universal cables. We'll go up here. Alright, so this is now getting uh, 40 FE. I think we want to go to... Uh, we're going to try... Uh... 100 FE per tick. Okay, so this should start heating up as you can see here real quick. It is heating up pretty fast which should be filling this full of brine. I think it's averaging at about 2.7 or 27. Chlorine the hydrogen chlorine it does look like it is going up. So what if we say go to 200 Fe per tick? Okay, so we want to heat this up. Hopefully, get this all the way up because. The faster we heat up the brine, the faster this will uh, utilize it, which means faster we'll get chlorine built up here, which, well, we already have a surplus of hydrogen chlorine building up again. And, uh, that, that that's mostly because I took some of those uh, chunks out of here, put it through here instead of through here uh, to build it up. So that that's how we get the resistive heater going. Here. So got that. Um, one of the issues we're running into right now is we do not have the power. And so I would like to go into reactor or into power and actually start producing the reactor block. Uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time in teaching this how to make it and get myself all the way up to the reactor nitros. But first, I wanted to show you guys how we're going to make the uranite here. Uh, the uranite is made in one of the, the energizing uh, orbs here. You take one, two, three, four, five, six of them and put them into one of the energizing orbs. So we can actually teach this to make uranite that way. So we can come down here where we already have the energy orb set up. And we should now be able to uh, request some of it. So we're just making six of it real quick and see real quick 
it just pops it right in there. Uh, with our lasers here, it takes absolute no time. Uh, so now all we have to do is just start teaching this the recipes here. Uh, I don't think we've taught it how to make the tiny capacitors. There we go. And I'm going to have to extend our molecular uh, assemblers here real quick. So let's grab a pattern. Another one of the 4X patterns here. And uh, I think we're going to need three more molecular chambers. I really should get some acceleration cards for these. Um, reason why is it will speed everything up. But I think next episode is where I want to turn this into a chandelier. So. Not sure yet. Not for sure yet. But uh, I think that will be the goal. I mean, we're already starting to get it to look somewhat chandelierish. Okay, so we've got that in there. So, uh, at power. Okay, so we've got the reactor starter. So, to use a reactor, we're going to need 36 of these reactors. I'm just letting this produce these real, uh, Real simple here. And once you have 36 of these, you'll just like right click them on the ground and they'll auto place them for you based upon where you set it down at. And it turns it into a three by three by four. Uh, so, yeah, give me a moment, uh, I'm going to get these all the way taught to Nitro, and I, I will be right back. Okay, we've got our first reactor completely done, but before we place it down, downstairs, um, I want to automate this Sidian furnace here, so what we're going to do is get a pattern provider and an importer. Uh, we're low on silicon, so give me a second. That's that's the reason why I wanted it. Um, yeah, there we go. Make a stack of that stuff right now. Alright, so what we need is a pattern provider and an importer. Uh, importer. Okay, so we've got that. We've got the pattern provider. Uh, now we just need some cables. We can just use standard cables here for this. This this is fine. Uh, we're going to set the importer here. And the pattern provider here. Top of this. We can take finally this stuff out. Oh, because we don't need it anymore. You know, clean up the base a little bit as we go along. All right, so we've got the pattern provider up here. We've got this here. So now, 
we can teach this how to make silicon. So we go silicon, we say, okay, how you make silicon for applied energistics is this recipe right here. We take that pattern out, just stick it right in there. Anytime we need to smelt now, we can just set it in the pattern provider. Uh, like we can go for like laser IO. Finally teach it how to make those logic chips and yeah just saves us a lot of time here uh, but one of the w one things i want is a 256 k here for um we're going to set it up for crafting and we're going to need it for uh, when we finally, we're going to like add another one of these. So we're going to need another cap crafting coprocessor and we're going to just pull this off. We need some dense smart cables. And I, I thought I had some on me, so. We have everything to make it. Just just waiting for the 256k to get done being made. Um. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm looking for an ideal place to set this down. And I think we're going to start the reactor chain over here. We're going to need a lot of these uh, reactors here. Um, we have this in bucket mode. Okay, there we go. All you need to do is put a bucket of water in here. It does not need to stay in here. Uh, we also want to turn auto mode on. That way it will stop when it's full and restart back when it's dropped below six or 70%. That way it's not constantly running. A couple other things we're going to need is to set up some ice production. So we're going to take this cable here, this cable here, this, and this. Uh, toss this away. Uh, we're going to also need a sink. Not a wink, a sink. Do, do I not have you taught on how to make that yet? Okay, so I don't. Uh, bucket. Oh, we don't even have a bucket left over, so. All right, so we got us a bucket here. Uh, I don't think I need this right now. No, no. Uh, I was. All right. Um, just I'm drawing a blank here. What we need to. Do. My brain just gets ADHD sometimes. Oh, bucket of water. And now we can make a sink. Yeah. There we go. And I need <clears throat> I need an uh storage drawer, a functional storage drawer. And uh, we're going to say it can be a one. One X. All right, so we got us the functional storage drawer here. Uh, also a Cooler upgrade would be useful. 
so we can set this up properly. What I'm thinking here. All right, so what we'll do is we'll come down here to say we could actually set this up in this production area here. Um, or just set it up so that's where we're going to put the ice. We want it to be the ice. Uh, we're going to set linking tool and configuration tool. And we're going to set the compactor. Yeah, it's the compactor that we want and the vaporizer. Set the vaporizer here, or the atomizer here, and the compactor here. And we'll set the which direction. We're facing east, so we'll put this in, the puller, and we'll set it to east. All right, so that should pull from the east, if we can hold TK. Uh, what we will set is the stink here uh, connected to a fluid pipe. I know we got off of the fluid pipe on that over there. We should, should stay away from the fluid pipe even here, but... Okay, so now, uh, can we... I think I know where the issue is. We have not fixed this yet. Uh, what happens is, yeah, this gets dropped here and not in here. Which, which ends up causing backlogs and stuff. I need to fix that. I need to add a second one of these extended inscribers to fix that. Uh, and add a another universal press on that last one. We made the stuff for the fourth universal press. All right, so what this will do is it's going to pull from here to the atomizer. Okay, so can we, uh, it is the south in this. We're going to set it to push. We're going to say the north side can be pulled. Okay. We're going to configure this the ice. Right? Because I don't, I don't think we can teach it. Yeah, we would have to have other ice to do the other one. So we'll just lock that recipe. Okay, so now add power to both of these it's gonna be a little bit ugly here for right now like i said it's gonna be a little ugly just to get this started uh, i i will add a uh, add a flux plug to this here soon. So what this should make is 64 water. This should pull the water out from there, but it's not. 
So what if we set this like this and have that? Okay, so this is going in here, making the ice. The ice is going in here and making this. Okay, so there we go. There we go. That is thick. What is your issue now? What are you waiting on? <sighs> it helps if Malcor remembered that I, I needed to set up you input. And that should be going into the system. Yes, it is. You could add acceleration carts to that, and that will fix the speed issue. Or and better yet, could take this off. Okay. Pop that free. Set this to input output on the top. Okay, there we go. All right, we got the 256K. Uh, now I need a coprocessor. Uh, let's go into uh, at AE2. And uh, we're going to make a 256K storage. I'm going to teach you how to make the crafting units. All right, um, I'm going to even teach you how to make the co-processing. All right, so now we should be able to get uh, this in here. I know, I know, uh, we still haven't finished the power. Don't worry, guys. That's still working on the power. Um... Okay, so we need uh, a coprocessing unit and a 256K unit. And we need some dense cable. All right, um, make four of these. Just getting process set up for the further furtherance of uh, our processings. Yes, English. <clears throat> All right, two fifty six K, two fifty six, uh, two fifty six, and a coprocessor. I uh, will just set these guys up here. All right, and we can easily extend this out a couple more. And two more after that. And uh, as we need them, we'll add more of the 256K ones to the system. Now we need an X, I can exporter. 
Uh, we're going to need a crafting card. Uh, we're going to need... I want three acceleration cards for this as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to this top. We're going to set it facing in here, okay, into this system. Uh, we're going to tell it that it needs O blocks. Okay, we can say block of coals. Okay, so we've already got those being made. We need redstone. Okay, uh, we need uranite. We're uh, night. Uh, and dry ice to come in to here. Okay, so we can take the things that we need that we don't have from there and drag and drop them in. Uh, this, wow, we should not, uh, Okay, so that is proper. Then we can toss in a crafting card and an acceleration cards into this. Into here. So now we need to teach our system how to make dry ice. All right, so dry ice is made in an in, uh, energizing thing. Simple as that. We just need more patterns now. Of course we do. All right. But it's made with blue ice, which is just packed ice. Okay. We can teach it how to make packed ice from regular ice. Uh, which we set up already, remember? So we can put in here this and this we just need to find the uh, energizing orb put that into there for the energizing orb and so now we can actually get dry ice as well uh, we're waiting on the ice to being processed so I'm going to have to give this a few moments and we'll see where we're at uh, time wise. Okay, guys, I noticed that we are well past the uh, limit here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build a flux line off of here. Uh, we're going to have it go all the way up here to the top. And over to this. Okay, so now that that's online, it should be exporting into here, but I don't see it uh, exporting. Trying to craft something? No. I'm not sure why that is a okay. Ah, okay. There we go. We we've told it to export using the round robin mode. And it is already starting to make this, but it doesn't have dry ice. So I, I had some dry ice that I made manually. And what it will do is produce a maximum. Uh, it generates 4,000 or 400. Well, it's producing a lot more energy. So 
I think it produced like half a million uh, FE per tick. So one of these uh, attached to our network here. We're going to just set this up to this network here. Uh, can pump as much energy to our system as we need. So what we'll do now is up here, we still have this guy. This guy will come off up here for right now because we don't need him up here. Okay. And we'll hold on to him for when we build the second reactor, which will set right here. Uh, and the water does not make this go down. It's just you know, we got to make sure we can get some dry ice in here as soon as possible. Uh, and, okay, so now we're going to want to put a flux point down here. Okay. Connect it to our network. So we're no longer needing the lava, but it's there as backup to this system. And, uh, oh, also, over here, to get uh, ice production, I made a second atomizer, which is just, you know, keeping this at a constant 16 per minute, or 16. Oh, oh, uh, I just messed up there. Uh. Anyway, that's producing ice right now. That is producing our power. I am happy that we have our second uh, crafting unit. So with that being said and done, guys, if you like this episode, go ahead, hit that like button. If you dislike this episode, go right ahead, dislike it. Tell me why you disliked it down in the comments below uh, so I can improve for your guys' entertainment. And until next time. Later, Gators.